And so, what do we do about a staph infection? Well, John says that, so if I come, I will call attention to what he's doing. He's not going to be a turtle and just ignore this. He's not going to be a teddy bear and try to warm up to Diotrephes. He's not going to even sit down and discuss things with him because Diotrephes won't discuss things. He's always right. He's not even going to be shrewd. He's going to be a shark. He's going to confront what's really going on. And he's going to bring it out into the open. And I believe there's a verse in Scripture that tells us how to do this. And this is a verse that I've had to use a couple of times, and it's a painful thing. It's a hard verse to follow. But this is an admonition, I believe, from the Word of God as to how we respond to a diatrophies, how we handle a wolf in the body of Christ. And it's different than Matthew 18. Matthew 18 is how to handle a conflict between two Christians. If a Christian hurts another Christian, the two of them are to sit down, work it out. And if they can't, then they bring a couple of people to try to help them work it out. And maybe even broaden it to bring it to the elders of the church and help them to work it out. And then finally, if it, gets, if it can't be resolved, they are to bring it to the whole church. And whatever the church decides is the final decision. That's a conflict between two, between two Christians. That's a different situation. But the verse we're going to look at now is the directions of Paul to Titus when you're dealing with a wolf, when you're dealing with a diatrophies. And in Titus chapter 3, verse 10, Paul writes this, Reject a factious man or person after a first and second warning. This verse is a wonderful verse. It's been so helpful to me because it's brought clarity of what to do with a wolf. It's brought clarity as to what to do with a diatrophies. And here, this person is called a factious person. The word is translated in some versions, heretic. And the word heretic is a Greek word that actually goes back to the idea of choosing your own way, rejecting all other truth and saying, no, my way is Yahweh. That's what a heretic is. Not just in doctrine, but it can be in practice. And so... This version calls this a factious man. It's a wolf. It's someone who's distorting the truth and dividing the flock to have their own following. What do you do? Well, it's interesting. The scripture says that everybody is entitled to two warnings. Even Diotrephes. And so, the leaders of the church, in following Titus 1, will sit down with Diotrephes, or John will, coming in as an apostle, and he'll try to show Diotrephes what it is that he's doing. He's maliciously gossiping. He's shunning people. He won't even receive apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're dividing the flock, and John would give him an opportunity to repent. And if he continued... John would say to him, if you continue in this course, I will warn you again. And if you continue on, then we will remove you from the church. We will beg off from you. And so that's what this verse is instructing us to do. Everybody's entitled to one warning. And everybody's entitled to a second warning. But we cannot allow a wolf to tear up the sheep 
there comes a time when we beg off from them. Translated in the English, reject. Now there's different ways that can be, can be done. Maybe a person's removed from membership. Maybe they're removed from a ministry until God might grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth. It's the most difficult when the wolf is a pastor or when the wolf is an elder or when the wolf is a very respected person in the church. Then it's very, very difficult. But for the sake of the body, we are to, after a first and second warning, we're to beg off. We're to not continue to work with the person. Now I had a person on my staff and um, this man was uh, significantly older than I was and for good reason he probably had a hard time respecting me at the beginning I was so much younger than him I had so much less experience and there came one meeting where he said something that was clearly wrong in front of people and I didn't know what to do, and I just responded back as gently as I could with a warning that that wasn't appropriate. And I determined that if he did it again, I would warn him again. And I determined if he did it again, I would go to our board of directors and ask him to be removed from our staff. Titus 3.10 gave me such freedom because it gave me a direction to go and not just feel helpless. And so, there's a good news at the end of this story. I found out that this man was not a wolf. He was not trying to divide our ministry. He was not really distorting the truth. He was just kind of honestly telling it the way he saw it. And it was really great to see that he really changed. And he really tried to be more respectful of me, and he tried to be more supportive of me. And we continued to work together for another six years. And um, I think he always probably wondered how effective I was. But he really demonstrated that he was not a wolf. He was what I would call a lion. Some people are lions by nature. They're just bold. They speak the truth as they see it. They're not afraid to give their opinion. They won't back down from any other animal. They're not a wolf. They're more like a lion. And uh, my first name is Richard. The English history has the history of Richard the, Richard the Lionhearted. Maybe I'm a lion. I don't know. But um, we are probably a little, by, a little bit like some some animal out there, but as we talked about a staph infection that goes back to a wolf that's come into the flock, I just want to close by giving a caution and a warning that sometimes you can see a wolf under every bush, but that's not often the case. Sometimes it's another animal, and we need to be careful to check it out. And one of the ways we can check it out is through a first warning and seeing how people respond and following the path that Scripture gives us in Titus 3.10. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank You and praise You that You have given us people to work with. And metaphors of animals can sometimes be helpful. I pray that um, You would teach us, maybe through these metaphors, to have greater respect and understanding of each other. Lord, we pray that you'd, first of all, make love cover a multitude of sins in our lives as we relate to other people. We pray that you'd help us to be quick to forgive and quick to forbear with things that we don't like. And Father, we thank you that there are clear paths when we have to do something that's much, much harder, like deal with a staph infection. So we thank you, Father, that you're with us, that Jesus is our shepherd, that the Holy Spirit is our coach and our comforter. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 
Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.